What is going on YouTube and welcome back today for another installment of Python. I uh, believe this is going to be lesson number four. Let's jump right into PyCharm with our current file to today and start debugging. Uh, and again, this code can be found on cupofcode01.com and this will be under lesson number four. So jumping right into it, let's go. So line number one, I have I am equals grant. Now grant is in quotations, so it's a string. I am is a variable, so it's gonna take what's on the right of that equation and throw it into the left side variable. So once I hit F8, where is that? There we go, I can see it generated a variable I am with the input as grant. Then I have age equals 38. We're gonna debug through that, just creates a variable age with the input of 38. And again, any of those variables can be changed as we go down into the code. You may notice a different formatting with the color coding. Um, I did that so that things stood out a little bit more on the videos uh, So after some viewer comments. Next line, now I'm on line number four. We're going to F8 through that. You can look to the right-hand side now over here on the Apple console, and it says, let us talk about grant, period. Now you'll notice we had a print function with the string, let us talk about, and then we have curly brackets. Now those curly brackets are telling Python I'm going to want to format something in there. Uh, you'll see those curly brackets also with dictionaries, but right now we're using it in a formatting sense. So we have our curly brackets, and then I have dot format. Anything dot in Python, after what follows after is going to be a method. So I want to do the formatting method, and then in, in uh, parentheses here, I'm putting I underscore AM. Now you'll recall this is a variable that we set up top here in the beginning of the program, IM, and then we have a string grant. So we're telling Python, Whatever variable this is referencing, whatever the input is for that variable, I want you to format that here into those curly brackets. So sure enough, let us talk about grant. Um, now this may seem stupid and silly, but this little piece here of formatting and coding is essential um, in internet marketing and in web marketing in general, or anytime you want to personalize something when you're extracting data that somebody puts in and then you want to reformat it into a, a particular output. Um, so very big in web development as well. So we're going to keep stepping through here to our code. Now, you'll see we went, just jumped there. Where are we? I'm on number seven now. So we just ran through line number six. So it has print, and then we have one in bra curly brackets and a zero in curly brackets, dot format. So nothing earth shattering there yet. And then we have our, our, our formatting, what we want to do. Now you're going to notice here, there are four, one, two, three, four different strings yet our output only put out two pieces, chocolate love, and they're not in the order that we put them in. Why? Here in Python, in this, in this particular line of code, we said for the first curly bracket um, format, I want you to put whatever is at index one. And you'll recall that Python indexes things starting at zero. So love is zero, chocolate is one, test is two, and four is actually an index of three. And then the next piece I have is for the next format, I want you to format what's in position zero, and that would be love. So I could just as easily had put this as three and one if I wanted to, and I'm going to run that through. And sure enough, down here on the bottom, what do I have? I have four chocolate because it took what's at index three, zero, one, two, three is the, the word four, and then at index one is chocolate. So by changing the order of these formats, you can get um, a different input, which this is huge, of course, if you have massive code to go through, it's very easy to change an index position than it is to change inputs per se. So now, okay, no, get you get out of there. So running forward again, then we have these underscore, we have an output, these underscores, and then the word sucker. So let's look at how we got there. So this is line eight, so we've got a print function. Now I have curly brackets, and then I have colon and underscore uh, greater than and then 10, Closing the brackets, dot format, and then the word sucker. Now, uh, and then I have here just as a comment, choosing padding. This is important uh, primarily in padding, especially for web development or even any kind of uh, GUI format um, or any time you need to do right alignment, left alignment, center alignment. Um, and you'll see why in a second now. So what is this actually telling? How, what is Python communicating here to the system? Well, the, the, the beginning first colon here that we have is saying start at the beginning. And then at the beginning, and then I'm printing this underscore, because again, I am in quotes, so I'm, and I'm telling it to print, so it's essentially making it a string. I'm printing here this underscore, and I only print this here so you could see, and we could actually count if we wanted to, the spaces. And then I'm saying greater than 10, just a numerical 10, nothing special about it, formatting the word sucker. 
Now, if you count this, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this full thing is taking up 10 places, if you will, on the screen, 10 characters. So that's what we put for a max of 10. So then we could say, what will, what would happen if I change this to 20? Then we'll run that, and we'll see what happens on the bottom here for 20. We'll just look what happened. It changed that place for 20 spaces, but it just increased the amount of dashes in the beginning because it was greater than. So the dashes are greater than the actual numerical value. So now if we go to the next line, we will F8 and step through there. Now I have sucker with the dashes after the line. And we got that just by using the less than sign. That's all we did. So first we did a right alignment and then we did a left alignment just by using greater than or less than. Same, same utilization though for padding. Um, and again, same premise here. I could have made this two and I would have just, I would have had a completely different output down below. Uh, here we have two. You don't see the dots here, uh, but if we ran it through on the right-hand side, you would see the actual the actual dashes um, uh, for the spaces on the right-hand side. Now I'm coming down here, and we have let's F8 through there. Now I have center alignment, and again it put the dashes through. How do we get center alignment? We use the carrot, or kind of like a power two, but this is the carrot symbol. So, and we have our dashes to print it out. Carrot symbol ten. And of course, had we made this 50, then it would have simply just printed out a space of 50 and centered sucker to 50. Um, not, 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 not too crazy, right? Um, and again, this format could have been anything we wanted to put it in. Uh, but this would have been a one for one at this point. We haven't done multiple, uh, multiple variables yet uh, for formatting. And again, this has huge implications for padding for web development, which we'll get into when we get to, uh, to Django. Running through the code again, next step. It ran through line 12 here, where we have x equals a string of elephant. So what does the computer do? It shows me that it's creating a variable x and it's putting elephant into that variable, string elephant. If I typed, if I checked the type of variable x, it would tell me that it is a, a, a string type, text. And then we're gonna step through the next portion. I have print x four, what did we get? So over here, the output was E-L-E-P, y. Well, I'm telling the computer to print X, X is elephant, start at the beginning and only go out four spaces. So we got one, two, three, four. So it actually went four spaces there. Now recognize this is not indexing. It did not index four. Uh, that would have been a, a, different, a different principle. So right now this was just telling it exactly what to print. Now you may or may not recall with strings, we cannot, um, they're mutable essentially, but you can splice and slice strings and then piece them back together again. Uh, tedious, but possible. Running the next code, we have x equals 9 minus 11. And you'll see up top here, it changed x from elephant to x minus 2. So now if I called, after I ran through this line 15, which I did, which we'll do in a second, once I ran through line 15, x is no longer elephant, now it's minus 2 in the system. So elephant's gone. Because uh, again, variables are, are mutable. So I'm gonna I'm gonna F8. We're gonna step through, and it prints out negative two. Nothing special there. Then let's move down here. X equals 11 minus nine. X is now changed to positive two, and we're gonna print out X, and we get two. But what if you needed to have an actual positive two? You wanted it to say plus two. For negative two, it prints out the minus. For positive two, it leaves it alone because it's a neutral a neutral integer. But we want it to say plus two sometimes, or you want that characterization. So here I have x equals 11 minus 9. So again, it made it plus 2. But what we're going to happen when we run through line 20 is the formatting that we have here is actually going to put the plus 2 in case we ever need that in a particular coding. And the way that we did that here is we just have starting at the beginning, and then we have a plus sign, and then the letter D, and then we're formatting for x. And again, x, as you can see up here, is 2. Um, integers get a letter D. This also could have been a float, and it would have been an F. And then we have, um, yes, you can also pad numbers. So if we wanted to, we could have also done the same kind of padding that we did up here um, with this additional plus if we needed to. Just so if you want to play with it, by all means, go ahead, try to break the code, uh, and then revert it back and figure out why it broke. Next line, let's F8 through, and what do we have? So we have a print, then we have our starting at the beginning. This means I, I want a total of only six characters a total of only six spaces that are taken up on the computer and then we're dot 2f so the f here i know that i'm talking about a float and by two i'm dictating how many spaces do i want to the right of the decimal that's all so for this float i wanted a float of two if you will so two parts to the decimal to the right 
and then format, and then I'm putting in exactly what I want formatted. So uh, as you can see here, we have 003.14, and that is three, four. You've got to count the decimal point as a character space. Three, four, five, six. So of course it took up six spaces. We could have also put this to 21 um, places with the float. And if we ran that code with 21, you'd see now we have 21 spaces after the decimal point. Um, it, it's, it's all a matter of exactly how, how you want to you format it. Nothing crazy there. Uh, but again, you'll notice now the six got overwritten in a sense because now we're showing way more than six characters in total. Um, but that's only because our float number is higher than, than the six. If I had made this, if I made this, let's get a little crazy here because we can fit it on the screen. If we made that 50, then you're going to see here we got nothing but 50 spaces. And then we're rocking out our 21 past the decimal, past the decimal place. Um, so I don't know of a particular reason why somebody needs to do that, but it's there if you need to. Python's very easy like that. Uh, let's F8 through the next section here. So as you can see, it ran through line 24, which is data, a new variable, equals. And then we're formatting first. And then let's see if anybody recognizes this. This is essentially creating... Uh, a dictionary. So we have a key and then a value. So the key is first, and I know it's a dictionary because I have curly brackets, and then I'm putting a string here in quotes, so I have first, and then I'm putting a colon, and then I'm telling it Hannah. So for the key of first, the value is Hannah. Uh, and dictionaries can be manipulated with, which we've seen before and we'll see again. Comma for the next one, and then I have a last key with the value of yo mama. So of course we can see the computer is now creating a uh, data dictionary and it's telling me exactly what the key and variable is for that dictionary. And then for the print function here that I will run through now, we have our output, Hannah, yo mama. And all we did there was we are telling, um, just like we did in formatting, because we're still, we're still utilizing the format method here, uh, we're formatting, and then I have star star data though. You'll notice in all the other ones, like in the format, I put what I wanted it to format. Same thing for sucker, same thing for love chocolate test in four, or I put the variable that I wanted in, but here I did star star data. What you're doing is essentially you're telling Python the dictionary data. So this also could have been, um, you know, boo boo, but I just would have had to make the dictionary name boo boo. And the star star is saying just essentially take it as is. Because uh, with dictionaries, um, something that can get funky at, at times is that the dictionary orders, the, the sequence, is not fixed. So you could have a key value, key value, key value, and print it out, and you'll get it in one order, and you can print it out the next time, and the order can actually be different. The keys and the values will still be tied together appropriately, but their, their, their sequence uh, can be out of line. So this star star data is just saying, for the dictionary data that you created, I want you to keep that key value combination for how we're formatting in this. So we're telling Python first, so it's going to grab the value for that key, which is Hannah, and then the next part is last, and it's going to grab the value for the last key, which is yo mama. So that's going to bring us all for today on this Python tutorial. Run through this, really get this formatting. Um, more so, again, so you can learn how to read the codes. You can understand what it's saying. Try for yourself to go put some padding in with the, uh, the plus D or, or plus floats. Try to manipulate it, see why it doesn't work, what does work, how you can make it work, and so forth. Uh, run through the debugger. I, I, I personally love the debugger. It was a great way to learn how to read what it's doing, especially to see variable creation, manipulation, outputs, uh, and so forth. Um, and keep up to speed with this. Get to the website. Grab the code. Because, again, uh, starting, I believe, on Thursday, we're going to be writing, we're going to be putting out the definitive guide to pandas to get everybody up to speed on pandas uh, and then scikit-learn and then running into machine learning. We want to get out of Python beginner uh, position as fast as possible, uh, just because you're not going to learn and grow until we really keep pushing that envelope. Uh, so again, grab the code, learn it, break it, fix it, learn to read and write code. Have a great day, guys.